Hello, my name is Zach Gibbs and I am a content developer within education services inside Juniper Networks. And today we will be going through the configuring control plane DDoS protection learning byte. All right, so here is our example. And in this example, we have a very simple topology. I have two devices, an SRX device and a QFX device. And between those two devices is a BFD session. It's actually BFD for static routing and this could be BFD for OSPF or BGP or anything else. And that would work the same because we're focusing on BFD traffic for this learning byte. And so what we need to do here is we need to configure control plane DDoS protection. Now, one thing I do want to point out before we get started here is that control plane DDoS protection is enabled by default. And so there are some default values. But we want to fine tune these values because, yeah, let's face it, every network is different. So your network might need different DDoS protection values for your control planes and your devices than my network might need. So with this, as I mentioned earlier, there's going to be a BFD session between the two devices and that BFD session is currently up and running and the two devices are passing BFD traffic at a rate of about 10 packets per second. And we want to configure control plane DDoS protection to limit that BFD traffic to five packets per second. And so with that, let's go ahead and jump to the CLI and get this started. All right, so here is my QFX device. Let's look at the BFD session. You can see here that the BFD session is in the up state. And you can see here that at the bottom of the output, there's a transmit rate of 10 packets per second and a receive rate of 10 packets per second. And according to the criteria of our case study, that's, that's too high. We want to cap that off at five packets per second. Now, the thing to keep in mind here is it's not going to cap it at five packets per second. And then the routers won't be able to really figure out like, oh, we need to lower that. So it's not like it communicates with the BFD protocol and lets it know that, hey, you need to lower this down. And so what's going to happen is we're going to cap it and then it's going to cause problems with the BFD session because it's exceeding the rate that we're setting and enabling that control plane DDoS protection. So to begin, let's jump into configuration mode and we need to move to the edit system DDoS protection hierarchy. And under here, there's a bit of configuration we can do. There's the global settings, but even though that's not part of the case study, let's take a quick look at that. And you can see here, we have a few different options. We can disable FPC, which is FPC policing for all protocols or logging for all protocols. Now, some other devices like MX devices, they'll have the ability to disable policing for the actual routing engine as well. So keep that in mind. Each platform is going to have different options and whatnot. But what we want to do, we want to jump into protocols and then jump into BFD. And from here, we can configure a few different things. We have the aggregate, which is for all BFD traffic, or we can also configure for unclassified BFD traffic. Now, keep in mind, different protocols are going to have different options here as well. And so with this, we're just going to configure the aggregate, so all BFD traffic. And under here, we can do a few different things. We have bandwidth, which is the policer bandwidth, and that's going to be in packets per second. Burst size, which is going to be burst size and packets per second. And we could say disable FPC policing for BFD, or you know we can specify the exact FPC that we want to disable it for, and we can specify some host-bound queue information as well. Now, again, the different options are going to be specific to the different protocols. So ICMP is going to have different options than BFD. So let's go ahead and set the bandwidth. And recall, we wanted to set that to five packets per second. So just specify five and let's go ahead and commit that configuration. All right, so now that that configuration is committed, let's look at the BFD session. And we can see it's up, but look at the transmit rate. It shows 0.5 packets per second sent and received. That seems a little funny. So let's look at that again. Still shows up. Now, if we do the refresh operator and say refresh one second, we'll see it's in the init state now, then it's up and it'll sit there and cycle between up and init. You can see the packet rates up to 10. Now it's back to 0.5 init up. The BFD session is flapping because it keeps going above that rate. And recall that earlier I said that the device, in this case, the QFX is not going to communicate to the BFD session and its partners, which is an SRX in this case, that, hey, we've got a problem. You need to lower this. This is something that is separate. And so, you know, and this is good because you could set this for ICMP. And obviously, if somebody's trying to attack you with, say, 
bunch of ICMP fragments really quickly, then you're not going to be able to reach out to that person, tell them to stop. So this is the idea behind DDoS protection is to just stop whatever's happening. Not correct the behavior, but to stop the behavior, which corrects the problem because then you're not getting DDoSed and you can continue offering services to your legitimate customers. So let's go ahead and stop that output. And just again, I want to show that. Yeah, okay, look, it's still having problems. So let's look at some statistics. Let's look at the statistics brief command for BFD. And we can see that we have some violation counts. And we see the state is in V-I-O-L. That's violation. That's what that stands for. And so, yes, it is in the violated state. And if we just do the statistics without the brief, we can get some more information. We can see aggregate bandwidth is being violated. Explanation. So that's the current state it's in. Uh, you have the number of FPCs that is receiving excessive traffic and that have received. Uh, max arrival rate, we can see it, sh it showed up at 11 packets per second. That should probably just jumped above 10 for a quick moment. And so you can see that, yes, we are violating that DDoS protection rate. And so, okay, what do we do? You know, we have control of both devices here. So that means we can fix the problem. So let's fix that problem. So remember, I told you earlier that this is a static route. And so let's change the BFD liveliness detection minimum interval to something that is below five packets per second. If we set that to 1000 milliseconds, that gives us a rate of one packet per second, which of course is below five. So let's commit that, then let's jump to the SRX and do the same thing. Commit that as well. All right, so let's take a look at that BFD session, see if it's up now. And we can see, yeah, we're up. It's at one packet per second. And let's do that refresh one parameter and see if it drops. And I can tell you right now, it's not going to drop because we are below that five packet per second rate for BFD. So we're good there. Now let's look at the statistics for the DDoS control plane protection. And we can see, okay, we got a packet rate of one packet per second. Recall it showed zero before. I didn't point that out, but it did show zero before under the rate. And we can see violation counts one. And notice how the state is still in the violation state. And you might be a little confused by that. The reason behind that, there is a timer that counts down from the last time it was in that state. And I think by default, it might be a couple of minutes or something like that. So it'll take a few minutes to change from the violation state to the okay state. But we can clear that state manually. by using the run clear DDoS protection protocols BFD states command. And we look at the statistics and we see that the state is set to okay. Violation counts one, packet rate is one packet per second. So things are working as we expect and we are no longer rate limiting that BFD session. So that brings us to the end of this learning byte. In this learning byte, we demonstrated how to configure control plane DDoS protection. And we also demonstrated how to verify control plane DDoS protection. So as always, thanks for watching. Visit the Juniper Education Services website to learn more about courses. View our full range of classroom, online, and e-learning courses. Learning paths, industry segment and technology specific training paths. Juniper Networks Certification Program, the ultimate demonstration of your competence. And the training community, from forums to social media, join the discussion.